Good evening, everybody. Thank you for logging on. Tonight, we have Helen Cohen from Long Island Branding Group here to present uh, um, for you about elevating your business and how you can do that. Helen, um, if you're able to, you can unmute and start sharing your screen. Um, the chat will be open for questions, and so, in the, so will the Q&A. Um, hi, I can't start my video. It says that the host stopped it. Jay, can you fix that, please? Thank you. Jay, just let me know when that's ready. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Helen. I own the Long Island Branding Group. And today we're going to talk about um, web design and elevating your online presence with web design and analytics. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. Give me one moment. Okay. If you guys could see. Um, I'll just share the whole screen. Sure. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. Um, so elevating your web design with your online presence with web design um, and analytics, enhancing your website with advanced analytic elements and user experience strategies to keep your visitors engaged. Um, so it also elevating your digital presence um, and the importance of web design in today's digital world. So when you're um, when you're on when you're on let's say social media, right, and you see a post or an ad for sale, the most important part of that transaction that that post or whatever is getting the client to click through to get to your website. Now, when they, they reach your website, they only make their decision on whether or not they're gonna stay there um, within the first like 50 milliseconds. I think that was a, that's a study that they did. So people don't really um, take a lot of time to get to know anyone. They either like it or they don't like it and they'll leave your site right away. Um, when your website has buttons that don't work, which I see a lot, like call to act, they're called call to action buttons. So, um, so it would be something like, you know, call now or contact us or some type of offer where you, where the person clicks through and gets the offer. Um, so that would, you know, turn the customer away as well, because they're just kind of navigating, they see a lot to read and they leave. So that's really important. Um, how web design impacts the user experience and site effectiveness. Um, recent statistics about engagement and user website design. So here are some 33% of marketers incorporate mobile friendly web design. Now your mob the mobile version of your site, I'm gonna go here because this has some good information too. Um, is really, really more important than anything else. Is their phones in order to go online? It needs to be perfect a hundred percent of the time. This is one I see this often where your website looks amazing on a computer, and then it looks horrible um, when they when you go to click on it on your phone. Some of the buttons are not clickable. There's no call to action. It's just a lot of stuff. This one, for example, is very clean, easy to read. You see the logo. You see a nice um, slogan. And there's a button. This is a call to action. It's clean. It's distinct. It's like, you know, click to learn more, free trial. You're giving them an offer. Um, this should usually lead to... Um, a form where they can collect their email, either that or to sign up right away. But you want to make sure that every single person that ends up on your website leaves something. So they either make a purchase or leave an email so you can market to them later again. Um, so this 
So uh, 0.1% speed improvement in an e-commerce site. Wait, oh, so this is about slow, slow loading. 33% of marketers incorporate mobile-friendly design into their marketing strategies. Very important. Slow website loading speeds cause nearly 9 in 10 people to abandon a site. The one person out of this 9 in 10 people is somebody that probably already knows you and knows to go there, and that's why they're not leaving. It's very rare that somebody will stay and doesn't know you and got to your website through, let's say, a social media post and will stay on your site if your site isn't optimized or user-friendly or engaging. Um, a 0.1 zero, a zero second speed improvement in an e-commerce site can increase average order value by 9.2%. A well-crafted UI, it's like user, um, like a, so UI UX, that's um, the user experience, user-friendly, by web designers can boost website conversion rates by up to 200%. So the small details do matter and they make a big difference. Um, enhancing user engagement and site aesthetics, advanced design techniques. Responsive design. So here I will show you, um, ensuring that a website looks great and functions well on any device, especially on mobile devices, this involves using flexible layouts and images, but a responsive design is, I will show you one that I did. Um, if I already got this. So this is for a landscaper in Florida, it's responsive. And what that means, you see how things move around and they keep you engaged, right? Because there's a lot of, there's, there's movement, the videos, when you hover over them, it's, it's very responsive. There's a video in within the text. Um, when you go to services, you'll find the same thing. So I'll, I'll jump around a little bit. Um, when social media companies, for example, they keep, they, their primary goal in order to sell ad space and to make money off of um, people boosting their ads or, you know, they, they, they make all their money that way because these platforms are free. And how do they do that? How, um, the, the most important thing for them is to keep you on your phone and users engaged. When it comes to your website, you want to have the same kind of you know, um, the, the, the same kind of goal, right? You want to keep them engaged. So any type of little movement, any interaction, things, you know, bouncing around on the screen, it keeps you more, you see how that popped up? It keeps you more engaged and more willing to go ahead and like read a lot of text as opposed to any websites that just have a lot of text and, you know, they don't really catch your eye. Um, so that's responsive design. Um, so the user experience optimization. Now there's also a flow, right? So you go in, I'll use this site again as an example. There's also a flow. So this is the user experience. Move that over. Um, focusing on making the site user friendly and intuitive. This includes understanding the user's needs, creating a clear navigation structure and designing interactive elements that are easy to use. So going back here, let's say either the SEO, which is um, search engine optimization, um, directed a customer here or a social media post or someone that just knows, you know, the garden goddess, they, now they're on her website, right? So what's the, why are they here? One of the most, um, one of the biggest reasons is they want landscape design. They get here, they call, they can call now. Or here, they can get a quote. If you get a quote, request a quote um, for your project, right? And then you have all of these different things. So by the time she gets the email, she knows exactly what they're on her site for. But this is we'll go back here. This is a user experience. So they go in, it's very clear where to go, what to do, um, how to contact her. It shows her services. 
but then if you once you flow right once you're once you have the options in front of you and you flow into the next thing now it's like okay let's say they want to, what would a user want to, what would a visitor want to know next you know who this person is right because if they're not calling right away or getting a quote for landscaping they're here to learn more so you're taking them through a journey so here's a little bit about her and then after you learn about her, you want to see some of her work. So this is some of her work, right? And it, it continues throughout. And, you know, there's different projects. Um, and then here's kind of like the sales pitch. You know, we offer a range of services. So they got to know her a little bit, see her work. And then again, you see a sales pitch, the services. This is called the user, uh, a user experience. So it's not just that. And then, you know, they can read. Um, the mobile version of this is gorgeous. It's it's a little different, but it's really pretty. Um, so yeah, about us and then the contact page, the same thing as get a quote. It's, it goes on the same one. So I didn't fill anything out, but um, the user experience is really important. Advanced interactive elements, integrating interactive elements like hover effects, animated graphics, and storytelling can engage users more deeply with the content. So over here, we have some interactive, playful elements. You know, this kind of spins, this one spins, the colors change, um, all the hover effects, right? And this is her story. So telling a good brand story, not too long. Again, people don't have a long attention span. So if you really, really want to capture their attention, short and sweet. Um, and you know, that should do the trick. And then micro interactions, small animations, like I just showed you, or visual responses to user actions, like a button. Um, sorry, wait a second like a button changing color or um, when hovered over can greatly enhance a user experience and give subtle feedback to user interaction. Um, and then the scrolling. So this scrolling is, is, well, that, so that you see the top right on top, this black, so you can make that stick and it'll, and, uh, and it can stay like that throughout the whole site. I chose not to with this one, but you can do that. And then the scrolling does make a difference. All these little details just, again, keep the user engaged. Accessibility and inclusivity. So designing websites that are accessible to all users, including those with disabilities, this is huge, and this is actually a requirement in some states. I don't know if it is in New York yet, but it might be in the medical field. Um, I know that it is in California. So some of this has to do also with um, alt text. Alt text is, sorry. Um, alt text is when you have images on your site, make sure to label the files correctly um, and then you can go into different places in your site and like kind of describe what everything is it makes it more accessible if someone can't see there are devices that'll help them you know read or understand what's on there it's great for seo it'll actually bring your website ranking up in google if you take the steps to make your website um, accessible to everyone so with um you know, screen reader compatibility, that's that. There's color contrast ratios. So this is this is something that I think most people would have to hire someone to do for them. Um, it's a little bit more involved, but it's definitely worth the benefits. Custom typography. So using unique fonts and custom um, and custom icons tailored to brand identity for more for more personalized professional look. So over here, all of her font is cohesive, but then I and it's all the same font. Um, 
And then I had fun with, so the, this is a masked text and I put videos in the background. So, you know, you can have fun with some of your fonts, not all of them. I would keep the fonts uniform throughout the site and not, you know, not have too many so that the it's easier on the eye and you can read it and stay engaged without feeling like everything's all over the place. And it makes your brand look a lot more professional when everything is nice and uniform. Um, and high quality visual content. So using high resolution images, videos, and infogra infographics to enhance a visual appeal and convey information in an engaging way. With your website, with, um, with social media, with literally everything that you do that involves your business in photography, it is really important to have clear visuals. Um, this includes Instagram banners, uh, your LinkedIn banners, your Facebook banners, the photos that you post, the content on your website. It'll help with loading speeds as well. Um, so if your photo is a better resolution and clearer, it'll load better uh, on someone's phone or computer. Also using um, high quality videos. I wouldn't do really long videos because that can slow down the speed, the loading speed on your website and make people leave the website. If nothing comes up right away when they're on your site, it can make people leave the site. So I would definitely stay in, you know, shorter videos, high resolution images and important images too, not just whatever image, but you can really think through like the things you wanna show and how you wanna represent your brand. You know, five great images is better than 50 images that are not that great. Um, qual definitely quality over quantity. Data-driven design using analytics and user feedback to drive des um, design decisions. So the, um, this approach involves continuously testing and optimizing the website based on user interaction. So um, with the design, yes, uh, one of my websites has three sections. It's almost like three different websites in one. And one does a lot better than the other two, which, which is the way I wanted to have it. It's one of my companies. Um, because those that one sells the most and you, you can you really learn a lot like when you when you see the difference between something that is not um where people are not really engaging like the photos are a little different and it's not really that interesting and then you see things that you know are really interesting and you're really engaged in the photos and then you buy and you click and you shop. Um, I even, I see that with uh, product photography as well. Some products sell better because they're photographed better and they look better than others. So, and then that's your data, right? Because you see where people are concentrating their, their time and what they're most interested in. SEO optimization. Every page uh, you can do this in almost any site building um, and almost any site building uh, platform. So there's always going to be some section where you can optimize your SEO. So if you're on Long Island, you can put, you know, your you obviously put your location, what you do. All your photographs can either be your brand. It could be you could even just write your neighborhood and then when somebody, you know, looks up, for example, Port Washington, my photos will come up in Port Washington, even though they're my skincare or, you know, my branding company or any one of those things. Um, so SEO can be fun. Google likes to also with um, SEO, if your photos are good, like we just talked about here, high quality. Google will favor you um, over other websites that don't have such great photos and your stuff will come up first. Um, 
meditate so meta tags keywords uh, keywords can be like if you have let's say a pizza shop you can you know port washington pizza or whatever it is i would definitely always do local first and then what you're offering um and that improves the site the site's visibility in a search engine. So again, Google loves that. Um, the more SEO optimization, the more you label all your uh, all the photos on your website correctly. And that's um, from your files, not just on in the web design, but in your actual files where you keep your images, you can go in and rename them. And you should rename them with your brand. Like I can re I can save this and rename it as Long Island Branding Group. And if I put this on my website and anybody searches Long Island Branding Group, this photo will end up coming up eventually because the search engine is going to pick that up um, in images. Um, so progressive web apps, creating a web application, uh, creating web applications that load like regular web pages or websites, but offer additional functionality, like working offline. So these are more, this is more for apps um, that is a little bit more involved. I know that you can make your own app in like Wix, for example, uh, that's going to be better for just sales. It doesn't really have a great platform for any type of, let's say, if you want to have social networking or anything like that, it's not the best app to, um, uh, company to do that with, but you, you can make apps that will work offline, send push notifications, text alerts, stuff like that, but it's definitely a more involved project. Incorporating these advanced techniques can significantly improve the quality and effectiveness of your website, making it not only visually appealing, but also user-friendly, accessible, and engaging. Um, and then SEO, what is SEO? We'll go over that a little bit. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. It's a set of strategies and practices aimed at increasing the quality and the quantity and quality of traffic to a website through organic search engines. The main goal of SEO is to improve a website's visibility in search engines like Google, Bing, and Yahoo. So you, if you want your site to rank higher, um, your website should definitely be optimized as much as possible with you know, for search engine optimization. So the search engines can pick it up. Um, keyword research, identify keywords that are relevant to your audience and used by your target audience. You can utilize tools like Google Keyword Planner, SEMrush, um, AHREFS, for in-depth keyword keyword research and to understand search volume and competition. You can actually also use ChatGPT um, or Microsoft Copilot. Those are both great. Um, and you can ask them to put together keywords. You don't need, if you overload the system with keywords, it's gonna be too much and Google will overlook you. So a sweet spot. I think five to 10 keywords um, maybe per page. That should be great. Then we have keyword research, identify keywords um, that are relevant to your content and used by your target audience. So again, similar to this, just identifying the right keywords and really knowing your audience um, and things that they would search for. So, just like, you know, the pizza, local restaurant, you know, Port Washington restaurant, if you're in the food business, um, the type of makeup, if you're in a makeup or cosmetics business, the type of skincare, whatever it is, um, make sure that it's something that your audience is going to look for. Quality content create high quality, informative and engaging content that addresses the needs and questions of your audience. Um, Google prioritizes content that provides value to its users. 
and then on page optimization. So um, this is similar to what we were just talking about, avoid keyword stuffing. But so search engine optimization. So there are back pages on many websites and on website builders if you're doing it yourself, where you can add um where you can add your own SEO and your own keywords, but all the content on the actual page should also have those words. So your website needs to have both. It should have it on the actual pages and in the back end, not just on the page or just in the back end. So if you had, for example, just a photo with no with no words on the page and then keywords, that's not good, or the other way around. It should definitely be on both as much as you can do that. Keyword stuffing is an outdated and unethical SEO technique that involves overloading a web page with keywords or numbers in an attempt to manipulate the site's ranking in a Google search in Google search results. So um, I talk about this when I talk about social media. When you're posting on Instagram, and you put like 45 different hashtags, Instagram's not gonna show your photo to anybody. I have an example of that here. Let's see. Yeah, I have an example of that here um, from another webinar that I did. So this is the same concept. It's all for the algorithm. So this person, their stuff is not gonna be shown. We can pretend that this is on a website and these aren't hashtags, but keywords and this over here, low quality photo and too many, let's say, keywords, right? Google's not showing this either. So the algorithms are very are very similar. Here, this one has a lot more, a lot of um, higher chance of success. The photo looks great. Google loves that it's clear, it's high resolution. And this is descriptive and not a lot of keywords. I would, for websites, I would add a few more and make sure that there's content on the site, but it's really the same concept. Like, you know, don't overdo it too much. So keep it, keep it light and clean. Um, it's good. Often these keywords are inserted in a list or a group or out of context with the content. The primary goal of this practice is to increase a web page's visibility in search results, but when it but but it results in poor in a poor user experience and can be harmful to a website's ranking. So once Google catches on to using too many keywords, it's going to stop showing your website to people. It's not going to take your page seriously anymore. Um, characteristics of keyword stuffing or repetitive keywords, excessively using the same keywords or phrases in content. So if like, let's say every page had the same exact keywords um, to the point where it appears unnatural or forced, irrelevant keywords, including keywords that are not relevant to the content or context of the page. So, you know, if you're, let, let's say that you're not having a sale, but you want to trick people and say that you're having a sale and your keywords are like Black Friday sale because you wanted to play with the SEO and then you put a bunch of stuff and then people go onto your website and they see there's no sale. So that's really not relevant. Google doesn't like that. Um, so uh, overuse in meta tags, repeating keywords in meta tags, um, like title tags, meta descriptions, and even an alt text for images um, beyond what's necessary. I'm going to show you what some of those are in a second. And then blocks of keywords, so placing um, long lists of keywords without context, uh, often at the bottom of a page or hidden in a website's code. So I have, log into here. And I will go into here. Let me show you the back end of mine. Okay. So let's say you're in Wix, which I love Wix. Um, I think it's one of the greatest web design tools out there. It's 
So this is my website and I'm going to go right here. So what I did was, okay, I went to home, manage pages, right? And then in here, I go into here. So you have settings and then you have SEO basics and then you can do things like social share. Um, you, you can create different page connections. There's a lot of optimization options, but let's go for SEO basics, right? So there's page information, it's the home page. I can change it if I wanted to. There's a layout, so I can get rid of the header completely if I wanted to. And then there are permissions. I can put up passwords, members only. I set it to everyone. And then SEO basics, so title tag, and then the meta description. So the metal description is basically, you know, what my company does. It's simple. Um, and I can change it. I can change it all the time, but it's not overloaded. And then I have advanced SEO. And then you can add, I didn't, but you can. It's not always necessary, but if you wanted to, I didn't want to. You can add additional tags. So I have just the Long Island Branding Group. I can add more tags if I wanted to. Um, you, yeah. So select the relevant instructions uh, so the bots know what info to display after crawling. Um, and here. And then social share. So I added my logo and social share, adjust image. Um, you can, you know, there are tools to help you play with that. If you wanted to make your image smaller or bigger, I'm going to leave mine there. If I send someone a text with my website, it's, it's going to come out just like that, like right under here to there, um, which is pretty cool. It looks great. So again, Long Island Branding Group, graphic and web design, very simple, clean not too overloaded um, and all all the images should be labeled the same way and videos. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi, Tina. Okay. Hi, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're uh, good. Um, I have a question. In the very beginning, you mentioned something about um, something that all the other states have, but New York doesn't have, with the exception of health care. Do you mind going back to that? Yeah. So it's um, it's accessibility. Uh, okay. Where is it? Hold on a second. Somewhere, yeah, accessibility and inclusivity. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Anyone else? So let's see. Um, we can actually look this up for you. What states require your website to um, to be uh, hold on. Where is it? Yeah, okay. Accessible, accessible version, okay. Oh, Aria, that's it. That's what I was looking for. So, um, the, uh, so, 
Um, you can actually go on this to see if a website is, um, what is this? Use your way website accessibility checker. It doesn't look sponsored, so it's probably a good site. Let's see, um, roll states. Hmm. But we can also copy. We can also ask Microsoft Copilot. Let's see this. Uh, and we can do some keywords with um AI if you guys want. Paste. Okay. Oh, where's the information? Um, okay. Or chat GPT is good too. Oh. Okay. So many states have enacted laws or regulations that require state government or public sector websites to meet accessibility standards that often include ARIA features. However, whether a private sector website must be ARIA compliant often depends on broader interpretations of ADA. It is widely accepted that private websites should aim to meet WCAG guidelines in which ARIA compliance to provide um, it, uh, which include ARIA compliance to provide better accessibility. California, New York, and Florida, for example, have been particularly active in enforcing web accessibility laws under the broader um, umbrella of ADA. So um, being website, being um, accessible and, you know, doing this will will definitely drive traffic to your website because not many are. And the the ones that are get a lot more um, a lot more traffic because people that have disabilities are limited to what they can use. So you would get all that traffic and all that business. Um, businesses operating online that serve the public or could be classified under public accommodation are strongly advised to adhere to these standards to avoid legal risks. I think for some types of businesses, this is a requirement. Um, but even if it's not a requirement, it's still a pretty, you know, it's a pretty cool feature to have on your website. If you have a specific state in mind that can help you find more detailed, so ChatGPT is trying to help with that. Um, does anyone want to do keywords for their business? Because we can do that with AI. Okay, I'll do it for mine. Um, so can you give me keywords for my business? Uh, SEO, um, my company is Long Island. So this is pretty cool. It kind of takes the thought process out of it for you. And you can just keep asking it to give you more ideas if you're not happy with what it gives you. Um, I have a chat here. Let's see. Okay. 
Ne, uzun da. Um, we'll go back to this one to that. Um, so what? Website fact one, it only takes people 50 milliseconds for users to form an opinion of your website. Website um, visitors, fact number two, outside of work, 93% of consumers noted using their phone while shopping, making it the number one leisurely activity performed on consumer phones. And then good design, fast loading, high quality, um, definitely SEO optimization. And then over here, I have a checklist if anyone wants to take a photo of that um, and save it. So this is really great. It's just engaging visuals, uh, feedback mechanisms, contact forms, surveys or chat bots, um, going to a website. Let's go to this one. Or really any, so many of them have it. Um, Not that. Um, 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 okay. That. So this one didn't, didn't disable it. Yeah, it's not coming. I think I just put the chat. Oh, here we go. So let's chat. So having a chat bot on your website is great. See, people can ask you questions. Um. having now there are you see so on this site for example you have the scrolling banners pure potent ingredients that accelerate tattoo healing this is for the tattoo line and then goes into those photos um having banners that offer free shipping is great Um, I believe that these have also, you see when I hover over them, they have that effect. Think about us, yeah, things move all over the place here. Let's see. Same, um, I had some images that swapped around. Let me show you this one. Um, Google. Oh. There we go. This website is cool too. So you have a video in the background, you have the logo, um, you have a slogan, some of the jobs. Let's see that. More videos. What happened here? Services. You have all these same little details, just like that one. Um, if anyone has specific questions that they want help with or for me to answer, please feel free to ask. Do you guys want to build the website from scratch? Yes, you can do it. Um, get started. Let's see over here. Continue. No, nope. go right back here. Okay. Yes. 
Okay. So we're gonna go like this. I'm working on building a website. Is Canva a good resource? No. Canva is not good for building websites. Um I don't recommend it. I've tried it and your website will it, there's just, just not good. Um definitely I like Wix, there's Squarespace, there's so many other better ones. Um Canva doesn't really let you get connected with any other interfaces. So you don't you're limited with options. I love Canva for designing things like you know, brochures and business cards and Instagram posts and all that great stuff, but not for websites. I don't recommend it. I do really like Wix a lot. Um, let me see this here. We have questions that say, what about GoDaddy yeah. or Shopify? Um, I think he's Wix editor. If, let me see it. Okay. I don't like GoDaddy. Shopify is okay, but Shopify is um, not great if you're trying to do it yourself. So that, um, is it for a product or for just the local business? And the GoDaddy sites that I've seen are just really not good. Um, they don't load quickly and they're a little bit harder to edit if you're doing it yourself. Product. Shopify is okay for product. Again, Wix is so much better. It just gives you more control and you, you don't have to stay within the confines of just one single template. You can really just do anything you want. You can also, um, so, in, so I'm in Wix, right? And I went to create site. Let me show you. I went to create new site and I went to Wix editor over here. And now what they have is amazing. So they have, it's going to show, you see, it has AI. So get started faster with the help of AI. Tell us about yourself. Get personalized tools, images, and text for your site. So this is in Wix editor. So you can start a chat or set up without AI. If you set up without AI, you can um, you can just pick a template and edit that template, or you can start a chat. So let's start a chat. Um, what do I want to call my site? Um, let's say hair by Julie, right? Let's let's pretend we're creating a website for a hair salon. Um, if anyone has questions, feel free to ask. More here. See. Hi, Helen. There's two in the Q and A. Okay. Um, um, can I download a design from Canva to Wix? I, you have to redesign it in Wix. But if you made banners or templates or stuff like that in Wix, you, in Canva, you can use those images in Wix. You can also, you should make sure that they're the right sizes and you can resize them in Canva to be the correct size for the dimensions that you need for Wix. Wix is not free, no. Um, neither is a website from Canva. So most of them are not free. It, I think if you wanted to do it monthly, I think Wix is somewhere between 15 to like $35 a month, um, closer to 35 if you want to set up sales on your website. So if you want to have a seller's website, it's 35 a month, or you get a little discount if you pay for it for the year up front. I think you get one or two months free. Okay. Um, sure. So let me, I'll move this over. 
here. Okay. Carabajuli is a, let's say, is a Harrison um, based in Huntington, New York. Um, let's say, oh, based Huntington, New York. Okay. Um, we offer cuts, color, highlights, and um, functions. Um, what services? Mm -hmm. Um, building strong, uh, social. Present and present. Um, let's see, we specialize in um let's say micro lens. Yeah, micro link here. Okay. Uh, Okay, you're all set. Go to dashboard and let's see what it's going to create. So, generate design, pick a template. We're going to generate with AI. what happens next is really cool you'll see because it gives you um it's going to give you options of for the layout and then all you need to do is just go in and customize it <laughs> so it generates AI images as well. Um this would be I'm not I'm gonna I'm gonna change, I'm gonna regenerate the site, but this would be where you right click, right? But instead of this, you'll be able to um connect your own social media. This is a menu, you know, microlink extensions, haircut, whatever the prices are. And 
a photo um, services, I guess why they're great. And then here by Julie, stay informed. You know, it, this site isn't pretty in my opinion, but it's, you know, it is what it is. You can regenerate it. If you like it, you can keep it. I would make, you know, some of the things like the price is a little bit bigger, but let's see. Or you can make it just a little bit different, which is also pretty cool. You don't have to regenerate the whole thing. We'll pick a good one and then I'll show you how to edit. This is something that you can't do in um in Shopify. So this one is a little bit different. Services and all that stuff is now now the whole layout is different, as you can see. Um regenerate site. And you can do this as much as you need. It'll just keep showing you different options. This one's a little prettier, it's cleaner. Um, here we go. The more information you put in the in that um, AI chat in the beginning, the more detailed um, this, this AI will be that's creating your site for you. So now it completely changed it before it's just changing it a little bit. Let me do this. I'll do it again. Try one more time and then we'll edit it. And this thing will keep going until you find something you like. So you could spend as much time as you want just like doing it over and over again. I like this one better, All right? So continue with this design, right? Um, continue with editor. Okay, now I'm going to go here. We're going to preview it. So this is what it looks like on, I want to book that. It's going to take you to the day in time. You need to set all this up in the back end, but it's not that hard. Um, this should be clickable as well. So we're actually going to go back. I'm going to go back to home. Let's pretend like this is the logo, right? We are going to link it and choose the page and we're gonna link it to the home page. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, okay. And you see how it has like an underline? We're gonna remove that and the link is gonna stay. I'll remove it right there. It's still going to work. So now, when I go to book now for the micro link here extension, and I click on that, 
your logo should always take you back to your home page. Um, and again, like some of the stuff we went over, incredible style, exceptional service, look great, feel amazing. I guess AI has like with the wording, it's not always there yet. Um, I would definitely make all of this stuff my own. You can also change the images. We're going to do that now. And then there's a call to action to discover more. Um, and then there's another call to action right under it. We're going to change the background. And so we are going to click images. And then you have, one second, you have media from Wix. And we can do here. The, the um some of the media here is free, so we can let's see this. This looks a little bit more like a real person. It's not AI, but it's like covering her eyes. So maybe I want something a little more to the side. Um. No, even though, like I said, we specialize in hair extensions, you don't want a picture like this to be the first picture because it's not that um, pretty to just show, you know, a close up of work. I would definitely do something a little bit more pleasing. I guess we can leave that. Um, no. Yeah. Now, if you want this to pop a little bit more. Hi, Alan. There's a question in the in the Q and in the Q and A. Sure. Um. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't. Um. Let me show you. So I can go here, I can go to upload images, and then I do work actually with the hair extensions company. So I have some of those. Um, I guess we can do, I don't know if these are very high resolution. These weren't used on the website, but we'll try it. So I up, I'm up uploading. No. Oh, we gotta go to change background and then do it. So, and, and you can see, because you see the picture here, um, image. And then now it's going to stay, that photo is going to be in my site files. And I just click on it. So you see how it came up um, in tile form? You can fix that in settings. Wait, no, not that one. Over here. You see where it says tile. It'll do that sometimes. Um, you can scale to fill. It's a low resolution image, so it's not going to look good. It's going to look grainy. Um, you don't have you don't have to use the Wix images, but this one's not good either. So let's go change background, um, image, and then if you don't like the images in Wix, we can go here. These are free too, and we can put in here. So that's really cool. <laughs> like fun and playful um but there's a there is a lot of white in the background too so you can't see that so much we need balance um let's see
Yeah, that's kind of fun. So just an idea, you know, you can play with it, but this is now more legible, you can see it. Um, and then services follow us. This whole background can be changed. So I would actually change this to a lighter color, maybe even like a beige. And then I would want that to be maybe that color. Um, change background. So you see how this isn't quite right. It's not. Um, it's not white. It has that beige color. So I'm gonna click on it. Wait. Oh, oh they connected. Okay. Oh, add. So you see, white is just F F F F. That's the number of that color. And this one has an eight at the end. It has an E F eight. So it's going to be more off white or beige. But if you want pure white, it's going to be that. Now, yeah, you can still see that other color here. So we're going to, I'm going to go back. It's just a little attention to detail. Um, Yeah, change background. No, that one is. It's okay. I don't know if it's just gonna change right now. Um, okay. So here where it says follow us, I'm not gonna connect it to my social media right now, but you can connect this to your social media. So you um you right click. And you go to settings and you connect your business account, um, your Instagram business account, or you can connect your personal account. So either one, if you're a photographer, for example, and you have all your work on your Instagram, it's, that's more of like a personal. Um, but if you're selling product and you have a different, more of like a product based Instagram or business, then you link it to that. Um, opening hours, you can, you know, oh, it doesn't say. So you can add that um, either underneath or over here, I would add, oh, here you go, okay. Opening hours, visit us. I actually like that better here. We can remove that completely. We don't need it. Um, the load more button is just going to show more, more Instagram posts. So once you have your feed connected, these will all be your own pictures. Um, our services, you can talk a little, a little bit about your services and then let's see uh, highlights and balayage. What happens when you learn more? Okay, back to editor. I don't know if this is linked to anything, so let's see. Um, see, so this isn't linked links to any page, right? So let's create a page. I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna copy what it says here. I'm gonna go to home. So there's book online, these are your pages. I'm gonna go to more. And I'm gonna add a page right here. So I can add a blank page, I can add a service page. Right. So there are different types of service pages, and it's going to give you kind of the same colors and branding that you have on the main on the on the first page, which is cool. So you don't have to redo all of that, but you can edit it. 
um, project. So I like general, let me see what the general pages look like. Um, oh, landing page project. Yeah, let's add this page. Okay. So this page is that. We're going to manage these pages. Now, this general page, we're going to rename so it matches. Oh, we can't. Okay. So, highlights and um, balayage and done. Okay. And now we're going to go here. We're going to change this image, right? Um, oh, that's clicking on it too much makes you crop it. We're going to change this image. We're going to go here and highlights. It's going to show me here. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't think she just got it. Hold on, let's try it again. Let's just go to here. Oh, here we go. This one's good. Okay. And then we're going to go to chat GPT. Uh -huh. Okay. And give me uh short okay give me a short just hold on description for um a website page for highlights and balayage um I would definitely rewrite this because ChatGPT likes to use a word of the day every other sentence. So I wouldn't leave it exactly like this. Um, it's a great, I'm, I'm only copying and pasting for now, but it's a great, um, it's a great outline. And then you can kind of rewrite your own within it, but just for, for time, we're going to copy it, we're going to paste it. Okay. Uh -huh. And then this should be, um, we're going to rename this. Click the book. Yeah. Click the book. Okay. And we're going to link it to book online, right? So now we, we link that button to book online. Then we're going to go home. And we are going to link. I did the last one. Right. Hold on. We're going to link this to a page in our website, highlights and balayage, right? And then we're going to go to preview. Now that button wasn't doing anything before. And now when I click on it, it takes you to that page. Um, over here, you can, again, you can either write your own stuff or use chat GPT. Here, I would definitely fill out your information. You can also add over here, you can add your socials. So social media, let's say you want this. Um, you can do that. 
This is pretty cool. I'll teach you how to make more pages easily too. Um, set social links. So let's say you don't have a YouTube page or here you can delete that or a Twitter page or a LinkedIn page and you just want these three. So we're leaving these three. And now to edit, so this is Instagram, you would click here and put in your Instagram because this is connected to Wix. So you would put your the link to your Instagram, which you can just Google on the um on your computer. You um you cannot build any of this on your cell phone. You can only do it from a desktop. So we go so and and repeat again for Facebook and I guess for TikTok or for any social you don't maybe you don't have these and you have different ones, but you can repeat the same thing for each one. So let's say these are connected, they match. You put in the right um, information. If you want to quickly duplicate a page, you go to my pages. And then over here, you click on that and you duplicate the page, right? Don't make it dynamic, that's more involved. Um, and there's no need. So now you have copy of highlights and balayage, right? So we're going to get out of there. We're going to go back to the home page. And, and what's the next one? Cuts and color. Right. So copy, manage pages, and then we're going to rename it. Cuts and color, done. And then we're going to go to cuts and color, and it has the same um, let's pretend like we changed this information. And then here we're going to change the image. Um, let's see. Let's do hair salon. That might show someone either coloring or cutting hair. I really don't like this photo so much. Um, so so we can go to media from Wix, which also has media. And we'll look for it there. Still here you have people cutting hair. Um, that's better. All right. And we'll go back to the home page. You you gotta remember to oh no, this one is linked because they duplicated the page. So you go back to the home page after you created that page and you link this button. Two, cuts and color, and then you preview and see what the site looks like. And there you go. I have a few minutes left. If anyone wants something specific to see um, or has any questions, let me know.
Okay. I'll continue. I'm going to show you now. So, oh, is there one here? Uh, you're welcome. Um, Veronica said thanks for the valuable information. You're welcome, Veronica. Okay. okay. So here I go. So I was here, right? And I'm gonna now I can click here to go back to the home page. I don't have to, it's really simple and easy. And you see these two. This is the desktop. And now I'm gonna edit the mobile version. How cool is that? We're gonna go back to editor because I'm in preview mode. Right. Um, I'd like to put a little bit of space. Okay. Now, I don't like the alignment here. So we're going to shorten this a bit. And I'd like to actually center it. So I went to settings. I'm going to center focus service. That looks a little better. Um, discover more. We didn't link that to anything or edit it, but you can again just create a page. This is how the Instagram is going to come out. Um, opening hours, and then you have the hours or services, cuts in color, highlights, learn more. Um, this over here I could have changed. You can't edit the color though in the mobile version. You can just edit the sizing or hide things or add things through there, but you you won't be able to edit the colors. So I'm going to quickly change. Oh no. It's okay if you delete stuff by accident like I just did. Um, you just press the go back button. So change footer design. And then I'm going to customize the design to go with the color that I chose earlier. And I'll do the same thing here. Um, change background now. It's still gonna have that stripe. Um, oh, because I think the page, that's fine, the pages, the page has that. You can change the colors of these. I'm just going to go right here to show you this. Okay. So here you can move this over. Um, you can add some elements, not all the elements. Most You can um, edit the writing. The writing has to be edited in the desktop version. You can only resize the writing. So you can make the font huge. You can make it smaller. Um, you can move buttons around. You can also hide elements and hide buttons. And now they're going to be in the hidden section. You can hide entire sections. And if you lose it, you see it hid the entire section. Um, you can put it back in. And, and I quickly just want to go over one last thing. Okay, if you want your if you want your stuff to like move and the elements and things to change, you can add animation with these. So you can have that. And then I would add the same to everything in this section. Because then actually what that does. You see it all? Oh. Okay. Let's go here and then go back. Okay. Where is it? Oh, it's not doing that. It's a little slow because it's not live and the editing, but it is supposed to float. Maybe sometimes when it's published, it flips. 
Okay. Yeah, it's a little it's a little glitchy. Um let's see what let's see how that works. Yeah, it's a little glitchy, but you get the point. I think someone asked. Um, you mentioned earlier that ensuring that your website loads quickly and responds fast is important. Does that speed depend on what you use to create your website? Um, yes, it can. Um, Wix is great. Shopify is pretty quick. GoDaddy is not. Um, Canva doesn't give you many features. So like selling things on your site and stuff like that is always going to be a little bit harder if you do a Canva website. Canva is amazing for um, graphic design and for like designing templates and stuff like that, but it's not great for web hosting. Um, WordPress is one of the worst in my opinion. It is very, very slow compared to something like Wix. So um, it really depends. Shopify is, is decent though for that. I don't love Shopify when it comes to it being user friendly um, for individuals as a graphic designer, I can use it no problem. But when it comes to people that want to, you know, create the sites themselves to save money and just, you know, have an easier time managing everything, even when it just comes to uploading new pictures or new products or all of that, Wix is going to be a lot easier for you because Shopify is definitely more involved. Um, but yeah, so these two, it, the platform, the web hosting platform definitely matters. Anyone else? Sure thing. Thank you, Andrew. I think there's another question here. Um, it, it, Jennifer? Uh, all of this will be recorded, right? Yes. Yeah, it's going to be posted on our YouTube. Yeah, so you can rewatch it. And... Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I hope you got a lot out of this and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Helen, for presenting tonight. And thank you everybody for all of your questions. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. Have a good night. Have a good you night, too. everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Good night.